What's going on, Flow Combatters? Your man, old Bo Steves, Dwayne Finley. I'm here once again with, I mean, whenever we do this, like, we don't, there, there's regular interviews. We yeah. don't do those. We don't, no. <laughs> we talk. Yeah. So. We talk in a hall. Yes. In a hotel. Doesn't matter where it's at, really. That The Shining was filmed at. It could be, right? Yeah. It, yeah, dude. Not so, yes, yesterday we were, um, we were working out on the third floor. And we we're like trying to get on the elevator, and the girls are like, "Oh no, there's uh, they're shut down." I'm like, what the hell? So I go down to the lobby, and one side shut down. There's a fire truck. It's like, what happened? And I was getting on the other one. He's like, "Oh, I was like, elevator got sucked." He's like, "It's like an elevator fall." And he goes, "Worse than that." And he goes, "Did somebody die?" And it closed. And he was like, so "Worse." Somebody, so somebody died in the elevator. Well, that's a good way to start the week. Yeah. But that's what I came. My, my conclusion. That, okay, yeah. well, it's, it's now, now you got me thinking about The Shining. I'm like looking over there and we yeah. see those twins. Yeah, the kids. Yeah, and like a big wheel in it. So, okay, we've talked a lot over the years, but I this this past year specifically with the road trip and things like that, we've been talking about at one time what, what seemed to be a potential move to Bellator. The next conversation was after you'd signed and then the move to Bellator and then the move towards the title and all those things that came with it. How's it feel now, man? Like, like you fight this weekend, and you you seem more at ease than I've seen you in a long time. Yeah, you know, and, that, and that's a it's a kind of uh, two ways to answer that. And it, you know, one is I'm refreshed. I'm excited about being in a new promotion. You know, and uh, um, you got to the point where every fight was the same in the UFC, like, at, like the smells and everything. You know, so I'm just kind of it's refreshed. It's new. It's nothing against UFC or anything like that. It's just uh, I'm excited to be in something. No, I'm excited to finally get my title shot. Mm -hmm. You know, and then that also comes with experience and, and the way I kind of changed my outlook and mindset and since my last loss. I lost to Anthony Johnson in a shit fight, you know, and, and um, it wasn't me in there. And I, was, I just kind of looked within and said, what's going on? Like, what do I got to fix here? And um, one was just not making a big deal out of every fight and just, and just realizing I fight best when I'm, I'm just – having fun you know enjoying the process of fight week not making it a big deal not overthinking the fights just going in there laughing in the back a couple minutes before the fight and going out there and fighting yeah. you know because you can't do anything you can't you know you can't you can run through the fight a hundred times in your head before it actually happens it's not going to do you any good you have no idea you know so you just, you just kind of um just know that you're going to react right and you've trained the right way you feel good and that's it just have fun with it and that's all you can do and so that is the biggest thing about keeping it light. And I did, and I came in with that mindset for Iller Latifi and Noguera. And, you know, I have two stoppages in the last two fights were two top 10 guys in the world. You know, now I'm fighting for a world title. Now, you know, you talk about like that, that old, that other chapter, and it felt like no matter what you would have done, you were stuck, you were just another cog on that wheel that was going to get played whatever way. Like, you know, this is, this call it what it is. You got used in the DC situation, yeah. For a, 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 you know to, to push that fight that with Jones or whatever, or however yeah. it happened. So now, not only can you like pause that bullshit and you're out of all that, but then you, you step in and you were gonna fight King Mo. Mo got hurt. Now you're in a title shot where you where we all felt you should have been anyway. But now you get a chance to fight for a world title, something that you not because you're not talented, because you, you're super talented. You're one of the top three guys in the world, but. Now is it a good not to deal with that bullshit? Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, you know, you uh, kind of hit it on the head there, you know, as far as, like, being a cog in a wheel, and you're just kind of filler a lot of the times. You know, unless you are those, those big stars, you know, you, you're just kind of put in to fill these cards, really. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's it. Um, and for me, I that's when my, my mind kind of switched, was after um, – Gustin got the title shot off a knockout loss, and I was like, "What's going on? For real? This is this is happening right now?" Mm -hmm. And I was told, "You know, go win your next fight, and we'll get your title shot. Win it, the next fight, and then oh, we're putting, you know." And so then I was so like, "I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna think right? about this anymore. I'm just gonna go fight my fights." And then when my contract, uh, uh, really much, you know, really my uh, last fight came sooner rather than later because I took a short notice fight. Gustin pulled out, and that was my last fight. Um, and I slipped in versus Nogueira. Mm -hmm. and he came and said, "Hey, we'll sign a new contract." I said, "I'm gonna fight it out, actually." Went and fought it out. Loved what Bellator had have to say to you know Scott Coker and Rich Chow, and uh, you know here we are. And then I'm, the next day after I signed, they came out that we're having a fight in Madison Square Garden in New York City. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be on that card, you know, and uh, slated for King Mo, and all, everything just kind of worked out 
and uh, I'm fighting here and for the belt. So yeah. it's, uh, I'm just excited, and that's why I'm loose, and I can't do anything else. There's no added pressure or anything, because mm-hmm. every fight there's a lot of pressure, but at the same time, my mindset now is like, whatever, Like, I'm, I, why make a big deal out of it? I'm gonna yeah. go fight, I know I fight my best this way in this mindset, so everything is a cherry on the top once you get that win, you know, the belt and everything. You know, I get to enjoy Madison Square Garden and the belt after the fight, sitting in the back, watching the pay-per-view card, you know, with the mm-hmm. belt right there. Yeah. That's when it sinks in. Yeah. You know, for me right now, it's just another fight. Yep. And, and you know, it was brought up today at a press conference, and I truly honestly feel this way. You've, you and I have talked about this a bit, and I, I've said that the momentum is changing in a big way in this sport. And I feel like this weekend in particular, Bellator not only can take that step forward uh, and, and make up a ton of ground in this race between them and the UFC, but also become an in become an industry leader in a lot of ways like you know for years when you were at the other place there was a huge gap that gap's not existing anymore yeah you know I mean look at this card right here you know and, and uh, you know if you look at the media and uh, you know even MMA message boards you know you never really heard anything about Bellator and this weekend's gonna change that yep. you know you hear people you hear the chatter you know and you hear yep. people um, excited about it and, and want to be a part of it and I'm excited about it. I, I'm excited to be a part of something that I can help grow. Yes. You know, and 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 put in the limelight, and they can, they and they and they'll reciprocate. You know, yep. they'll uh, they'll push me, and they'll uh, um, get me out there. And, and so I want to represent, you know, not only myself, but I want to put on a good good fight, win that title, represent Bellator, and help them go to the next level, which I know they can be at. You know, um, <laughs> this weekend. Yeah. Well, and the thing I guess is not often mentioned in this sport, at least on my side of it, is to see the type of media that's here this week. Granted, it's it's a big card, but there's a lot of sites that are here representing that could face repercussions from the UFC because mm-hmm. that's how they work. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, okay, well, we're having a show in Oklahoma, and you went there, and not not the fact that it's a bigger card with bigger names, but that's what I mean. The tide's turning where the and you're a big part of that. Like your you your free agent signing was the biggest free agent signing. I don't care anybody says it, it was the biggest in the sport mm-hmm. we'd ever seen. You never saw a, 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 a top three guy test the market and be willing to to go what's best for him. Yeah, because you always see it off guys yeah. off losses, right? Yeah, and I you know and uh, there's always a, a thought here and there, but. You always played the safe route, you know, and st- stuck with the UFC. And there's still goals that I wanted to uh, achieve in the UFC. I still wanted to be champion and everything. And so when I re- kind of realized that it was going to be one of those things where I literally had to beat every single person on the roster to, to get that shot when uh-huh. people were just getting plugged in and plugged in and plugged in. You know, for me, it was one of those things where I said, all right, this, now now's the time, you know. And uh, um, in the past, you didn't do that. There's nowhere to go, really. You yeah. Know? And now uh, that Bellator is... You know, it's, it just ran right, and it, they're doing the, the right things. And that was one of the things, you know, I wanted to make sure that, you know, and I asked Scott Coker and his child, where's Bellator going? What's the plan for Bellator, you know? And, and they had great answers, and, and what's the plan for me? And so I felt like I was part of something. Yes. Like you said, not a cog in yep. a wheel. You know, so for me, that was, that, was, that was huge. And so, you know, for I hope it opens up the minds of other fighters. And you're seeing that right now, a lot of – a lot of guys are fighting their contract on, and, saying, the, and right, a lot of guys are speaking up, speaking up where they didn't before, right? And, and it takes that little bit, you know, that that water leaking out of the dam until all of a sudden the yep, floodgates or or the boom. spark yeah. to start a fire. And that's what I'm saying. I, you know, there was no lack of importance that with with you testing the market, you know, and not to go back over that, but you took you had options in front of you. You had the championship options in front of you there, and you did what was best for you because like you said a bunch of times people don't understand when you're fighting for half and half like hey you're like ah you know half my purse is here and i have to do the rest to win and then to get the payday that your family needs you know it's going to change the way you fight it's going to change your mm-hmm. mentality yeah. but especially you're a lifetime competitor man and and you've never been wanting mediocrity isn't something that's ever yeah. been in your blood so you you're like hey yeah i want to get paid i want to win fights but i want something bigger yeah and when that chance for something bigger the roads out there is is, is clouded and fogged then that ends up being a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, and I, I don't want to be contained either. You know, um, you know, I'm not to go into specifics in my contracts, but I, you know, with Bellator, but I have, you know, bonuses I can achieve, and and uh, you know, the the sky's the limit, really. Where in the UFC, you know, I'm at my if I lose, I'm just at my show money. You know, even if I put on a great fight, you know, you may get a, a fifty thousand dollar bonus, you may not. You know, and then uh, if you miss out on your your win money, that's almost half your pay. You know, but say yeah. say you do win. 
and you do get, you know, um, you get your full pay and you do get a bonus, you're capped at that. You're mm-hmm. not getting anything. It's not like I have pay-per-view. You know, I haven't fought on pay-per-view forever anyway, but it's not like I have bonuses in there. So yeah. with Bellator, I have these, these bonuses and these, uh, you know, uh, kind of milestones to achieve that I can, my, I can earn as much as, you know, what I put in there. You and, know? That's, and, if, and those are, those are motivating incentives, mm-hmm, right? Yeah. You know, it might, I have a great, um, a great purse, but those, those bonuses are in there and it's just motivation for mm-hmm. me to go out there and achieve, the, achieve those, you know, and, and then it opens the door, um, where I can get sponsors and I'm not limited to a capped amount of sponsorship money yep. too. It, you know, if I do it right, I can go make a, a very good amount of money in the sponsorship game too, mm-hmm. you know? And so, um, I looked at all those when, when, um, looking at different promotion, but I also looked at, you know, the, the treatment, you know, and, um, uh, respect levels. Mm-hmm. You know, I went to my first belt tour in Chicago yeah. and it was, it was crazy. I, I brought my wife and we were, it was just, who's you know, awesome by the way, no, Daisy, Daisy Bader is a fantastic thank woman. You, thank you. You've done well for yourself. I, mean, I have, I have. And, uh, but we had a great time and treated with respect and, yep. and, uh, um, same here. And so it's just cool to see. And then I come here and then we're fighting in Madison Square Garden. We're in New York, you know, I go to media day and, uh, you know, I didn't know what to expect. I've mm-hmm. never been through a fight with, with Bellator, and everything is as big or if not bigger than yep. the UFC. You yep. know, I've been fighting on uh, fight nights my last couple of ones, and and uh, the media room over there at Viacom was was crazy. You yeah. Know? So it, it was a, it's re- refreshing, and I'm excited, and it's just a, a brand new uh, chapter. Mm-hmm. Now let's talk about this fight with Phil Davis. Now you and Phil fought before. Uh, you know, one thing I've always li- liked about the, your approach, Ryan, is there's always there's always a steady. Uh, I would say like the process of progress, right? Yeah. Like you, you could rely on your strengths if, if that's all you want to do, but you never rest on your laurels, right? Uh, footwork, head movement, you know, the things I've seen you combine over the years and we've talked about. When you look at your game compared to what you've seen from Phil watching tape, um, we've noticed that Phil's, you know, found a little bit of power that he didn't have before. Uh, his striking's developed, but he's also, but he's, he's you know, a pure and red wrestler. Yeah. When you look at this matchup with your two evolved senses, both you guys, how do you see this thing playing out? Yeah, I just, I just feel like I've evolved more. Not not just from our our first fight, because that feels like forever ago, mm-hmm. you know, but I, you know, I didn't feel good about that fight and uh, neither did he, you know, and so, uh, uh, I want to show everybody how much I've grown since then, and, and what I'm bringing to Bellator here. And but I feel like I've grown a tremendous amount from November to right now. You know, um, just new coaching staff. I'm drilling, which is something I really didn't do too much of. I, you know, I'm I'm diving into those techniques and whatnot. Mm-hmm. You know, whereas yeah. before it's almost like warm up, let's go live and and get it done. You know, um, but I'm putting in that work, and I feel like I've evolved so much from even my fight with Nogueira to right now. I, yeah. think, I think that biggest block is where I've evolved the most in the past five years. Mm-hmm. And another question is kind of a story that didn't get a lot of uh, pop, but it, it did once we got on Flow Combat. Um, Hennem Barak yeah. uh, and his coach, like, uh, the interview was with Coach Ped, uh, with Didi uh, uh, Pedneris, and he said that, you know, somebody asked him about, uh, uh, what's the coach? Jair. Yeah, yeah, coming to power, taking Hennem, yeah. and, and he said, he said, I would encourage all Brazilian fighters yeah. to do the same. Yeah. Like you can't, Brazil is, is done. Like yeah. you can't get the training you need in Brazil yeah. and you need to go in a place like Power that that can give you all the training you need. Yeah. How'd that feel for you to know that you've created what you guys created just a few years ago is now something that people are like, man, like that's where you need to go. Yeah, no, it's awesome and bringing him in, you know, and uh, um, we're actually changing the location. I just bought a building to bring mm-hmm. in the, uh, uh, the new Power MMA, and so they'll be open probably around in July, August, and, and we've been training in this uh, big wrestling facility right now, the whole fight team, and uh, to watch Burrell and everything and learn from him is awesome, but, um, you know, that's what I was talking about with Jair coming up, and, and uh, he's a good guy, good person, and he's an amazing coach as far as breaking everything down, and he's a whole package, and so, um, you know, bringing him up there and, and, and the following he has and the guys that mm-hmm. he pulls up there, and uh, you know, just little stuff as, as far as like a striking coach. He was asking me, you know, um, what are you thinking of, about striking coach? I, I think I need somebody else in here. And I said, all right. He's like, Let me, just hold on a couple of days. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a phone call. And got this uh, his friend up here, Rafael Gomez, who's worked with Auto and a bunch of the guys, and flew him up here and worked with him. And he came with a stack of notebooks of uh, keys to victory on Phil, 
what we're working on. And so we're working on combos that I'm actually going to use in there, working on if he does this, we're doing this, all down the mm-hmm. line. And uh, it's just crazy. And so I feel like I've progressed a ton, and he brings a lot to have Hennon in there fighting in July, mm-hmm. going through camp together, um, pushing each other, and uh, it's just a good atmosphere. That's what I mean. Like, the people who might, like, fans or viewers of this may not realize that, like, MMA in a lot of ways is so, sex, like, segmented off. Guys stick with their own, and they stay in these places like, you know, Albuquerque or mm-hmm. in San Diego, these gyms that are, they'll, they may bring a few new people in, but it's mostly tried and true. Like, you have power, and then you also have affiliations with guys in South Florida or mm-hmm. those coaches or people in, in South Dakota, and, like, you – there's always new people coming and there's always new people to, to take from. Yeah. Like you've always kept it. Like there's always something I can learn from somebody. Yeah. I and mean, we've been in this game for a while. It's crazy to, cause I feel kind of new in the game still. Um, but it's been almost 10 years. So we've, we've developed those relationships and whatnot. And, uh, um, you know, just for for example, I brought you know Corey Anderson out yep. there, and, and Love he's, that kid. he's awesome. You know, and I brought him before the first Phil fight, and he's uh, he's one of those those guys that is one of the hardest workers Absolutely. I've ever seen. And uh, you know, I call I call him Duffel Bag Corey, and, dude, one, yeah. and this is because when I actually I met him before, but when I actually got to work with him, he came through Indianapolis uh, with Mitch like to train just for a day at Mitch Rion's yeah. shithole, uh, the meat factory we call it, but he had a duffel bag, and and he said everywhere I go. Uh, I just keep my duffel bag with me in my gear because I never know when I'm going to get a yeah. session in, right? Yeah. And he does. He works hard, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, he works crazy hard. And so it's inspiring. And, you know, I think he's going to be a champion one day. And um, just stuff like that, to be able to, you know, the the MMA community, you know, if uh, if if you're a good person and whatnot and and uh you know you'll you'll be able to have those contacts and people want to train with you and they're willing to come out and and vice versa you know so it's cool to see and and uh you know you all you always want to mix mix it up and now that i'm in bellator too i can without worrying about if i'm ever fighting Corey, i can say hey Corey, come down here you know and uh let's get some good rounds in two best two top five guys in the world yeah you know so it's cool it's definitely uh we like to mix it up and before my last question i gotta take just i gotta because I, because I have experience, I know a little about this hat you're wearing, right? Yeah. So, not only are you, uh, you know, a, a elite fighter, but you're also a businessman. Yeah. And there's a lot of your business acumen that the the power MMA gyms, mm-hmm. the you know, uh, uh, Cycle Sport, Monster Milk, yeah. those things that you've you've even though you couldn't like tout those relationships because of the Reebok deal and things like that you still carried on through yeah. with, with uh, like American ethanol and things like that that you've always been uh, in all the work you've done with the military man it's been fantastic and I know these things because we know each other outside of this yeah. but also I've been able to tell that story and to see your commitment but let's talk about Juby um, you know there's a lot of uh, not to get political on any things but there's a lot of this you know uh, doctors how they you know like like uh, uh, what do you call it, like the Adderall, things mm-hmm. like that. Like there's a lot of, you know, people that get put on this stuff because, the, you know, their brain and or what they assume to, but it's all this other effect. What I loved about when you introduced me to the Juby and we had a conversation, it's all research, it's all clean, yeah. it's all, you know, amino acids and yeah. things like that that are, that are good for you. And I know that you had a huge part in that. Oh, yeah. Because that was your demand, right? Yeah, well, I mean, people... Um, I always like to diversify and you know I'm not just a mixed martial artist I love competing I love training but you know um, I, I also love getting stimulated different ways and one is business and and uh, people say oh it's such a sponsor of yours and no like from the ground up we built this company my brother-in-law and I and uh, you know we, we wanted to, to do something we wanted to um, you know right now we have just a little two ounce shop you uh-huh. know, it's, it's for uh, focus and stress relief and and um, but it also helps you, like it's, it, it helps you sleep too. Yeah, like at good, the same time, yeah. Peaceful, restful sleep. So it's not like one of those. Like, it's not an energy drink. Exactly, yeah, it's so, not. It's something and, else. Uh, people almost say it's like medicine, you know. And so we you know, we sell it in all circle K's for about five thousand stores nationwide. But we literally went from the formula and added stuff to it, took away, you know, had our, uh, um, you know, our chemist and, and the scientists behind it. And then we just started trying to get it out there and, and we did it all, you know, from bootstrapping in the ground up, you yep. know, and uh, I go to the, we have an office in Arizona and when I'm, when I'm training, I, in between training sessions, I go to the office, you know, and, and uh, um, so it's not just a sponsor, I'm in it and I'm, I'm the yes. CEO and my, and my, uh, my brother-in-law's there. Um, doing the same stuff as, as I am, you know, coming out with different stuff, pills and whatnot. Um, but it's fun for me. It, 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 it's fun, and I get to, I get to, you know, represent that. I get to represent sponsors like what I'm wearing here, Monster Milk, Side of Sport, American mm-hmm. Ethanol, you know, yeah. Eight Man Strong, and, and uh, um, those good people around me that have stuck by me yep. and, and um, 
and then you know when it was time to have sponsors again they were right, right on there. board two yep. months ago you know but that's a testament ryan you know you're a humble guy but that's a testament to your character I appreciate the fact that you uh it wasn't a paycheck to you you know no, what I mean? Yeah. Like you went to the charity events, you put the extra work in to because you because these aren't brands that are paying you. These are brands you believe in. Yeah, and I'm friends with you know I've made friends with you know every higher up there, and yeah. I consider them friends. They're not like oh we're doing a sponsor thing, sponsorship thing. You know I communicate with them as friends. Right. And then, you know that's just on top of it. Yeah. You know? So um, and it's cool to, you know to represent brands that I believe in and stuff, and then. Uh, um, so it just it feels like everything is just coming together at the perfect time, perfect moment, you know, get to win a world title in Madison Square Garden yep. and friends and family around me, everybody that supported me. I've been in this game for, you know, I've had 20 UFC fights, I've had 30 MMA fights, you know, if uh, you know, they don't count the uh, Ultimate Fighter ones mm -hmm. on my record, but they're on there, you know, and, and uh, so I've, I've had a great ride and it's a, this is accumulation of it all. So I'm just going to make the best of it, you know, and uh, um, this is a goal of mine. I've, I've always had to have a belt, a mixed martial arts belt, and I never got the mm -hmm. chance because I jumped around in earlier promotions. I never fought and, and won more than twice, except when I, I won the Ultimate Fighter, then I got in UFC. Yep. You know, so um, so it's a big deal. But going back, it's just for me. I'm just walking into this like any other fight. Yeah, it's, it's like you said, you just detailed and documented a bunch of history. But it's crazy to think that this is a whole new chapter. So that's where I want to, my last question is, you know, you have a beautiful family, you have an awesome ranch, you know, you have all those things, you have a great gym, a great team, great relationships, but those are all things you've built, okay? Mm -hmm. You've manufactured your destiny through hard hard work, sweat, blood, you yeah. know, but vision, yeah. right? So now, everything you've accomplished before is kind of put over here now, and there's a whole new chapter starting here. Yeah, I agree. So. How does that feel right now to think that you have so much wind at your back and everything you vision envision is all there for the taking on, on Saturday? It's just it's accumulation of it, from when I was seven years old and my parents, you know, driving me to California to get better wrestling in and whatnot. So it's just it's it's the people around me and it winning that belt wouldn't be just about my accomplishments. Mm -hmm. It's the accomplishments of my my family, my parents growing up, you know, my training partners, my my uh, coaches, everybody that stuck by me, my friends, you know, and, and so I'm just fortunate if, when I raise that belt, that's for everybody. You mm -hmm. know, it's accumulation of all their sacrifice and hard work. And then, you know, and for me, I'm just happy that I get to do something to share with the world. Not only that, to share with my friends and family where they get to come and gather at a place like this and give them a reason to, you know, and, and I have 30 people coming out and we're gonna stay a couple of days extra and have a good time. Mm -hmm. And we all did it because you know we're sitting here fighting in Madison Square Garden. You know, yep. So for me, that that's what it's all about. You know, it, it, that belt is not for me to put on my mantle and say, yeah, I won that. I'm, I'm the best in the world. It's for say, all you guys are part of that. Every one of you has a little piece of this belt. Yep. You know, and uh, it's just a memento of everything that everybody sacrificed in that group I have around me. I'm old enough now. When I was 20, I had a bunch of people that were you know, friends or acquaintance, but they really, really weren't, you know, and now I have a group around me, you know, that they do anything for me and I do anything for them. So that's what it's all about. Yep. So there you have folks, Ryan Bader, head of his world title fight on Saturday against Phil Davis. I want to say thanks to this man, because anybody who's ever followed my career or flow combat knows that this guy always is gracious with his time. He will always, if, if I'm out in his neck of the woods, he'll drop everything to take an hour to hang with old Bo and, and always drop the real talk. So Mr. Bader. I appreciate it, brother. It's always, always been great, good. man. Yeah, I and check out Juby. I'm serious. Try Juby.com.